Hey guys, welcome back to episode 2 of the Dark Crypt devlog. So before we get started working on any functionality for the game, I'm actually going to play around a little bit with shaders just to see how they work. So I'm going to be following some tutorials online and seeing if I can do anything cool. The good news is I was able to get the outline to work, however, the bad news is I couldn't get my version of it to work. So I actually followed a tutorial series by someone named CodeMonkey on YouTube, and I attempted to make my own outline shader, which didn't quite work out, but I was able to download his and it works perfectly. So why it doesn't work when I do it, I don't know. I think there's just some settings that have changed or else I'm on 2020, the version of Unity. So maybe that has something to do with it. But yeah, anyway, at least I have it working, even if I didn't do it myself. And as cool as that outline looks, I'm actually setting it back to more of a default material of the lit tile basic so that we can only switch to the outline when something awesome is happening. So next what I need to do is I need to actually fix some of the little particle effects that happen. So you see here when I jump, it's like the dust comes out of the middle of the character instead of the correct place. And also, yeah, if I just use my punch attack, you can see that the animation actually appears up there when it shouldn't. And this is because if we look at the gizmos here for the player, you can see that the location for spawning these different uh, sort of attacks, these little circles here, are not in great places. So let's go ahead and get that fixed. Okay, we finally have all of the different particles working, so let's check it out. You can see that the particles appear behind the player like they should, and while I walk around, you can see a little bit of dust going on, so I've added some new parameters here. For example, on repeat when horizontal motion, and then the repeat time. So if there is horizontal motion, then it'll keep repeating this little dust cloud that'll appear, or in this case called a dust puff. And yeah, so also if I collect that item and then hit K, you can see you actually have the little staff swoosh as it's called now, which uh, will change in the future, but yeah. And also if I jump, you can see there is landing particles. So just about everything that could go wrong did go wrong. And in fact, I was finding some issues with some scripts that I'm not sure if it's actually correct, as in the... 2D game kit itself. So that's really interesting to see. Anyway, the 2D game kit has a lot of unique features for the visual effects, so I had to work a lot with the VFX controller. And you can see when you press play, it actually does some fancy stuff and it creates all of the different objects that you might need for your particles. And this is to make sure things in Unity are running efficiently because having like millions of different particles spawning and then 
uh, being destroyed over and over again is a problem. So what it's actually doing here is it's creating the different particles for you and just deactivating them when you're not using them and then resetting their location and then activating them when you need them. So you can see as I move around, they're turning from gray to black, which means they're being activated again. So yeah, it's all pretty cool. And yeah, one last thing. I hope you guys noticed I changed my IDE. It's looking pretty fancy right now. I don't know, I hope it comes up just fine on uh, YouTube. It might not, but I don't know. I feel pretty cool. Yeah, I'm kind of like officially a hacker now because I have this. Okay, all jokes aside, uh, I've made a lot of changes to the Trigger VFX scripts and a few little other changes. So I'm really feeling comfortable now with uh, the 2D game kit that we have here in terms of the particles and in terms of the animator and movement. Because the when it comes to the animator, I haven't worked much with it in the past. And the particle systems, I have worked with, but not with the way that they had it set up. So it was really interesting to look at. But anyway, we still have a lot more work to get done. For example, the last thing we'll be getting done in this devlog has to do with uh, actually the weapon here and the melee weapon and everything like that. Okay, it's not on the animator, never mind. But basically, I can't attack. If I press the attack button, nothing happens until I collect this item which for our game doesn't make much sense. It made sense for uh, the game sample, but I need to change that for my game now. So let's get right into it. Oh, and by the way, I keep getting this really weird error about the tile map. Huh? I don't know what's going on with it. Eh, guess I'll just ignore it. <laughs> Perfect. The character no longer needs to pick up this staff in order to be able to punch and do a kick as well, actually. But if you pick up the staff, you can still punch and kick. And it was really simple to implement, actually. All I needed to do was check this melee attack enabled, and I just went through the code and make sure that everything still would work correctly, and yeah, it seems to work correctly. So the only thing is, if you do pick up the staff, it's going to continue to enable the melee attacking. But in the future, I can always change this and maybe add some other cool sort of functionality here. And I'm still getting this grid paint palette window error? I just don't know what it is. I wish it would go away because it's the only error I'm getting. Ah. And that's it for this episode. Thank you for tuning in. So this guy's going to jump around a little bit. Yeah, thank you for watching. Yeah. 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 Okay, this is really lame, sorry. <laughs>